Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom City Games. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to another tutorial of setting up the procedural generation of seaweed in the ocean landscape biome. Now let me go ahead and make the screen a little bit bigger so you guys can see what I'm currently showing you guys here and what we have built so far. So we do have a few types of seaweed. Uh, we have seaweed 01 and seaweed 02, which is the name of the landscape material that spawns different type of seaweed. So we have taller grass types like this and then shorter ones like that. Uh, then we have coral uh, seaweed, which is something mix of the coral with seashells and a little bit of a grass type here and there. But I've also run into another landscape material that I totally forgot about, which is located somewhere here and I'm trying to find some of it. Okay, so here is another part of the landscape material. This one right here is a seaweed, uh, sand seaweed. So it's a sand mix with the seaweed together. And this one currently has only this particular type of static mesh of this coral. And we're gonna add uh, another type of seaweed to it to bring more vegetation before going into adding corals like I've promised in the previous video. So I have found that I have six more of this type of seaweed that I have not added to the game. It's part of the underwater life project you can guys find on Marketplace. I'll drop a link to it. Uh, it also has six different corals and some water lilies for some of the little ponds that we're going to be creating later down the road. Uh, I've created a foliage folder for it already. Uh, there are some rock formations for the landscape. And then also this is the some of the starfish that I've showed in the previous video, the sea orchard and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in back into my vegetation folder. We have six of those. Uh, I have also have opened my landscape grass type folder. And here we have our landscape grass type and I'm looking for it. It's supposed to be named sand seaweed. So sand seaweed is right here. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can see that I have five array elements and I'm going to add six more. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we are up to 11. We're going to go ahead and scroll this to the bottom. And here we're going to be adding more of these static meshes. So you don't need to use the foliage for this. For the grass type, you only use static meshes. And if you're using procedural box, then you can use the foliage for it. All right, so I'm going to start with this tall one. I'm going to add this to our grass mesh. You can see that it's starting to build a uh, new grass type. Now what I'll probably end up doing is minimizing this window over here to the side because I would like to see how it populates. Next time I'm going to bring this to the bottom so that we'll have a bigger screen to work with. And I'm going to actually go back to a place so that way you don't see that painting tool. And that's way you'll be able to see all the new grass type that's now forming. I'm also going to press G so to get rid of all the boxes that I've set up here. And then you can press G again to have it reappear. Now, if we're to swim, underwater, right? Uh, the idea is to create a vegetative system where it's a little bit more populated or less dense. So here we can uh, view, watch it live. We're going to go ahead and change it to 800. So we're now doubling the amount of grass types that are growing within this area. And you can see that now it has populated to double of that amount, which made the whole world a little bit more covered in seaweed, which I think is a little bit too much because, again, uh, swimming underwater here, we already have quite a lot of vegetation. I mean, it's great to see that, but I know the whole ocean is not usually like that. It has some open areas where it is just sand. So we're going to go ahead and change this back maybe like 250 for right now. Uh, the cooling distance is going to start from about 2000 and the end cool distance is going to be about 6000. Uh, we can always change that depending on the camera distance. 
Now over here it has not loaded it up yet, so just give it a moment. And you can see that by f swimming or moving the camera farther away, you can still see that from above this section, you can still see the grass over here. And it doesn't really appear anywhere farther in that distance. So what if we do 8,000 instead of 6,000? You will see that grass probably over here will begin to appear, this green grass. But again, it's going to take some time for it to build this grass. And as of right now, that's exactly what it's asking us to do. We have rebuild the grass types. And it's going to take some time for it to load this sector of the map because I haven't been there uh, since I've loaded this project. But you can see that now there are some other grass types appearing in this area as well, which looks really nice. Now it's actually loading up with some other part. Okay, cool. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Now the next thing, what we're going to do is scale on the X. It can be changed. Now if we're to do, let's say, 5, it will change in height. Alright, cool. So you can see that some of these are much, much larger in size and some of them begin to come out over here on a shoreline. I really like this type of grass. So I'm going to reduce it back to 4 just because I would like to actually have some of this grass type being really, really long and tall and some of it to be really, really small. And it's still protruding here, which is totally fine because what I can do later down the road is uh, fly around. Let's go on this side to see if there's any of that stuff appearing. Okay, so there's a grass type appearing here as well. But I do like the height of it. So the only option I have here, since the grass has already been painted or the landscape has been painted, is either repaint the layer or I can reduce that in size because I don't want that to happen everywhere through the map. So we're going to reduce that back to three. So the height of it does not protrude anywhere on the shorelines of my ocean. Now, if there's just a little bit of that, that's totally fine. Again, I can probably increase the height of the ocean just a tiny bit because I do have some of the other seaweed appearing there. But I think once we add a system to where the water affects the movement of the seaweed maybe it will form in a way that it would not be protruding through the ocean but i think the size 3 will look just fine let me fly back this way to where i was originally at with all the fish that i've created but now you can see that it's much more dense with these corals uh, and the seaweed itself the second one that we're going to add is going to be the shorter ones and with that one we're not going to play too much on the sizes of it in the x value uh, we're actually going to be decreasing the size of it to give it that variation so let's go ahead and implement this one now what's going to happen is once you add the second one it's going to subtract some of this grass type and it's going to replace with some of those as well so now you can see that it downsize in size and the quantity of this particular grass because now we have a smaller type of the grass forming. Let me go ahead and reduce my camera speed now because I don't need to be flying through the whole map. And if you scroll your wheel back, your camera will fly slow. But if you're to increase the speed, if you'd like to increase the speed of your camera flow, you can use your wheel on the mouse forward and it will fly much faster so check the speed so this is going to full speed at camera speed 2 and here is by scrolling the wheel back and moving at the same speed almost not moving at all so you can uh, play around with that at any given time so you don't fly through the maps something like this you can control the speed of the map using your wheel but you can see that now it's forming all this other different vegetation uh, all the way in the ground. There's nothing uh, flowing above the landscape that I can see here, which is nice. Uh, the other thing that I did mention is that we're going to change the scale. So we can do this maybe like 0.2 to 1. So now we have a little type of grass to all the way the original size of it. So let's go ahead and wait for this to load up. And again, it's going to load up somewhere in this sector of the world where it has this seaweed formation. And now it has a mixture of really, really little ones 
to a standard size, something like this. You can see that uh, the same type of grass is in different sizes. Now the cool distance, of course, can be decreased because um, that's just way too much. We'll keep it at 5,000. Actually, uh, start cooling is going to be 1,500. And the end is going to be about 5,000. If not less than that, probably like 3,000. So let's wait for this to load up. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and add the third one. I'm going to press F11 to minimize the screen size. Now, again, these are a little bit different formations. There are somewhat in the bulk, but you can see that they are spread out a little bit different, and it's just going to give us extra stuff to add to this particular foliage. So let's go ahead and open this up, and I think I just closed it, didn't I? Nope. Okay, it's right here. So this one doesn't have anything. We're going to go ahead and drop the third one in. We're probably going to do like 150 of those. Uh, start going distance again, 15, maybe like 80. And again, just try to keep a variation of dif different amounts. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So this one's going to be like maybe 5,100. And then the scale again at point, maybe like 3, 2, 1. And then we got three more. So let's go ahead and drop this one in. Same thing here. Let's do uh, maybe like 375 of those. Start cooling distance is going to be like 1600 maybe. And then end cooling distance at 3500. Maybe even, yeah, 3500 is fine. And then scale again, point maybe 25 to 1. Just trying to give it a random variations. And then gonna add these tall ones. I think this one was just what a straight grass. So in this one is a single static, or maybe there's two of them of exactly the same grass type, which is already applied here. Uh, now if you are using the same project, so the idea here is to either use those. And additionally, on top of what already is being spawned, or you can just either choose this one versus these, but I want to add more of these. And that's why uh, we can decrease the amount of this to maybe like 100. So that way it's an additional on top of these, but it's just going to be more of those in that particular area and not mixing with anything else. So you can see that now it's populating almost like a grass uh, through the world. So if I were to zoom in just a little bit more, let me slow down the camera. And now you can start seeing that it's pretty much everywhere to the world. But what we want to do is change the size of it. So it's going to be 0.1 to about like 0.2. What do you guys think? Is that uh, a good number to put down? So that one, instead of it being in size one now, everything is going to be really, really small. But it's going to be in a larger quantity. And you can see that here it is. The little type of grass, you can see that this one is this one is exactly as what's shown here, and it's separate from the rest of this patch. So you can see that this patch right here is one of the one of the patches, and this second one right here on the side is on its own. Uh, let's fly around through here somewhere else and see where else we can find. Oh, here we go. This one right here. This is the single patch right here. But since they all have the same animation you can clearly see that they're all swaying the same time. Now, the idea here is to make it more realistic as possible. So what is the actual solution for this? Uh, there's one way of doing this. You can actually, by opening up uh, this static mesh, right, we can figure out what uh, material it belongs to, which we just worked with not long ago, right? It's underwater material. So what you can do is you can actually duplicate this material and create maybe like two or three different variations of this, or you can even create all six. Create six different variations for each every single one of those, and then, then change the speed for every single one of them. And now you will have a movement of the corals and the seaweed at its own speed uh, variations based on that material. So. Here is a, you know, a good tip for you guys to utilize it. And I'll do that probably in the future. It's going to be probably a win for every single material separately. Because otherwise, it almost feels like not enough effort has been put into it to make it 
look more realistic. Now, we got to also change this. So this is going to be probably way, way smaller. Uh, we're going to probably downsize it to like 2000, maybe 300. So that way it's not too far out there. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that much of it anyway. Uh, last one, but not least, is this big patch that we had. We're going to add that. And this one is going to be like maybe 50. And the starting again is going to be 1200. And the end cooling is going to be like, I don't know, maybe 5000 again, because it's a pretty big patch. Now the scale of that could be reduced to like maybe 0.5 to 1, so I do want this patch to be kind of big, but uh, not as frequent as the rest of them. And the final result of this is not going to be visible until we rebuild the grass. Okay, and if you guys have been watching my previous video about the setup of the school system, I have mentioned the texture streaming pool over the budget and don't be too concerned this is just like a something standard uh, setting that is set up when you open up your project i don't know how to permanently change that but every time you do that you got to open up a command and type in the command in and the command is as followed r dot streaming that pool size equals 2000 and now once you do that the message will go away now let's go ahead and press play. And I, as I promised in the previous video, I no longer have a third person character in the game. I took it out completely. Uh, so that way, well, I still have the twin blade guy, but I don't have a actual third person player anymore. So let's go ahead and delete the twin blade or whatever his name is from the world outliner. So we can actually test the game. And we're gonna click play. I didn't have to delete them. I could actually just change the pawn to zero for it not to spawn but i probably do not gonna need it for any time soon i'd rather just fly around with the camera and show you guys the demonstration so here's our first swimming around the school system that i will have to adjust but as they're doing that we can look at some of this cv formation i don't think this particular long grass type actually has any vegetation uh, movement whatsoever because i'm looking at it very static so what we're going to do later down the road is actually duplicate this wind movement and we're going to apply to every single static mesh here so that way all of it's going to be moving which is going to look really nice and i think i'll do that in the future videos because right now uh, the goal is to put them all in the world then go through all the blueprints for each of those and then see which one is the best that's been written by a developer and then we can combine them or you know utilize them for all of them and then just copy and paste copy and paste to all of the other vegetation but i do like this grass type I, I think i might even create a separate grass type uh, static mesh of this like a clone and that one is going to be spawned only at much larger sizes so on the x value it's going to be really really long uh, but it's probably going to be a procedural box because i do have this landscape material through uh close out of the shorelines to avoid the seaweed appearing anywhere uh, this is going to be more of a like uh, a particular biome within the ocean that can be done with the procedural uh, box generation but there we'll have to use an actual grass type so another uh, grass type uh, what do you call it the foliage so let's if we look a look at this foliage which is exactly that same static mesh but if I want to create much longer ones, I'll just have to duplicate my static mesh because foliage does not count. You have to duplicate your static mesh and reconnect that to your foliage. And then from there, we can create much larger and longer seaweed formations. So it would be nice to see something that can grow really, really long, like 30, 40 feet long in height. And then you have to kind of swim around it. So you don't have to like even see too far out into the ocean again the seaweed is not going to be what's going to be preventing you from seeing too far it's going to be the ocean color of the water itself i have not optimized that yet and, and because of right now it's not even a priority but and the reason i'm not doing that is because i do want to see how far uh, this grass step does spawn and again the smaller stuff you don't have to set the cool distance uh to or what, too far of a distance because of all this other vegetation being in the way uh, but I think it does look much, much nicer now, having all this new vegetation set up. The one thing I don't like is the formation of 
uh, the corals over here, not the corals, but the section biome right here is a little bit light on density. So I can probably even use this grass type growing on here as well. And we can do that too. So by going back to your grass types, we have sand coral. We can open these up. We have 48 of them, which include all different coral um, seashells, which I have not added actually one of them in particular. So let's go ahead and do 49. And we had the animal one, right? So we have these Murex shelf, uh, it's called shellfish. Uh, I'm not going to change name on this because I don't really know what this shell really is. But what I will do is create another LOD for this. It's going to be another small prop. Uh, this one is not going to have any collision because it's so small. Uh, it would be completely pointless doing that. But if you ever work with static meshes and you're trying to figure out how to set that up, you can do that within the settings here. There's a section where you can add Where is it? Where is it? I'm trying to remember. I haven't done a project default right here under complex collision is simple. So that will create the collision for the character. But again, it's a low seashell. So we're not going to need to do that. Now let's go ahead and scroll this down to the bottom. Now we have a new section for this shell and we're going to go ahead and drop that in. Going to select that, drop that in. And now you can see that it's pretty much everywhere. And the reason for that is because it's been populated a higher quantity. So let's go ahead and drop this down to like maybe 12 because it's way too big. And let's compare it to our other shells that we have. So the seaweed is over here somewhere, but we want to look at shells. So it's 45 for the corals, eight for the smaller shells okay so maybe we can even decrease this instead of 12. we'll do maybe like uh you know what there's one right there right so there's a really big one big one here and and that's about it right so it doesn't really populate too crazy okay i think it's not too bad let's go ahead and make the screen a little bit bigger again and fly around to see how often they appear. The idea is to just kind of make it a little bit more random and not as often appearing. Okay, so there's another one right there. Uh, maybe we could decrease this to like nine. And then again, end cool distance is gonna be like 1600. Star cool distance is gonna be like at 500. And what we're gonna do is reduce the size of this again. We'll do 0.2 to one, so that way it gives a variation of that. And we're going to click save. Now we did have three more things that I wanted to add to this particular or four things. So we have mussels, oyster, and then two sea orchards. So let's go ahead. One, two, three, and then if it lets me, four. I think they didn't do the last one, but we'll see. Okay, now we did. So we're going to do mussels. We're going to add those. This is going to be like maybe quantity of 30, right? Because we want these to be more of in a group. Uh, the circle and distance, we're going to do like a thousand. And then cool distance, maybe like 3,500. I don't know how far. Actually, you know what? No. Since this is an open area, we probably want to do 3,500. So let's go ahead and do 0 0.2 to 1. Give it a variation of sizes and let's go ahead and do a quick fly through test see if it actually populated because i don't see anything being generated yet so it's going to take some time for it to generate this grass type now remember with the grass types like this once you create a system where you can load it up all right, so we can see that there is a big one. It's way too big. Let's see they change the scale to like 0.5. Where did they get that big? Did they get that as big as the corals like that? I don't know. 
I'll just reduce it to 0.5 because I think I think that static mesh is way too big. Now we're gonna do oyster expose. We're gonna do the same thing here. 0.5 for those. 0.2 for or 0.1 even the size. Again, a thousand here, and then the ankle distance maybe 3,000, and then for this one, let's do like 3,200 too far anyway. Uh, 400 is too much, so it's gonna do like 120, because I want them to be in bulk. So this one right here is 35, a 30. Let's do 150. And then we have sea urchins. Now they definitely come in quite a large quantity sometimes in the ocean. So let's go ahead and drop these in. We'll do like, I don't know, 80 maybe. And we can do another 1200 here to 3600. From 0.2 scale to 1. Let's see how big the static mesh really is. And then sea urchin number 2. Same here. It's going to be probably like around 90. Uh, starting at 1,100, ending at about 3,700. It's probably quite a large number, but it's all right. 0.2 scale in size, and then we're going to click Save. And then let's wait for this to calculate everything, and then I'll come back. And Actually, it's loading up pretty quick on the seaweed, but it hasn't loaded up the corals yet. So I'm going to... Zoom in and let's go ahead and find a large section, which is right here. This is our big biome with stuff that now has orchards. You can see that they're all here and there. Okay, so in a large in a larger areas like this, it seems like the sea orchards are quite often appearing on this landscape. I don't know. Do you guys think it's too much for the sea orchards? I know they're a little bit rarer than they should appear here so let's actually reduce that it seems like it's way too much because i every time i ever snorkel underwater and you don't see that many of them so let's just do 32 and then maybe uh 15 for those and then i don't know maybe like 20 oysters and 13 for those i don't know i think i just went overboard with these numbers let's go ahead and click save because we can add always something else to it. There's going to be corals and things like that, so not to worry about it. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Control Shift S while it's loading everything. Let let it save so that we don't lose any progress. And then as it saves, it's going to calculate everything. And then it's going to create this new vegetation type. And then every time I save it, you can see that my landscape turns into Minecraft. <laughs> All right. Once it loads up, it should be okay. Oh, the other thing, you can see that the grass type does not grow on the slope, and that's because we have not even touched that yet. I've only been doing most of the stuff that, yes, this is slope, but it's not the slope angle that is written within the Brushify I.O. Uh, therefore, you don't see anything growing on here yet, which is great. That means I have more stuff I can actually place there. And let's go ahead and slow down the camera a bit, and then we can do another fly through. You can see here is an orchard over here, uh, the oysters right there, and yeah, they're a little bit less now dense. Now, if we do want to create a section, like let's say you want just a bunch of oysters, like a, a family of a hundred of them um, somewhere living over here, I can show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and create a grass type out of this. First, you would want to do is go to foliage. Here, you'd want to drop these in. I don't think this one has foliage. Let's see. So I created foliage for this, but I have not created uh, foliage for the animals. So let's say we want to create foliage for these four, right? Uh, in more of an, like a pack system. So you're going to go ahead and drop these four in here. And under foliage, we're going to go ahead and create, save each individual type. Make sure you select the correct folder for that. Foliage. One, two, three, four. They're here now. They're saved. Let's go ahead and open them up. You can see that there's four of them over here. Now going back to this uh, grass type, we don't need to use that anymore. What we need to do now is find my folder for procedural boxes. And I have 
a folder dedicated to that in the vegetation folder under the darkest green folder over here. I have quite a lot of different over 50 different foliage boxes, but I'm not using all of them. Some of those were just uh, prototypes and just test purposes. So let's go ahead and open up our seaweed 01 because I know there's nothing in there. I'm going to close everything here because we don't need to use the seaweed 02. Now it's going to be renamed. Let's uh, figure out which one it's going to be. So first let's do a sea urchin, right? I'm going to go ahead and select this. Uh, select the sea urchin itself, the name. Oh, if I could actually do that. And then we're going to rename this to C urchin. And then we're going to make the letter capital. Okay, so since we got two C urchins that we can place on the world, I'm going to go ahead and find a good spot for it for demonstration. Let's go ahead and then add two array elements. We're going to choose the first C urchin, type 1 and then 2. I'm probably going to end up renaming these guys, but you can see that you need to actually use a foliage type instead of a static mesh for that. Uh, we can click both of them at the same time and click edit so that way you can see that it opens up two foliage types so here we're going to do the z offset at zero to max zero we don't need to mess with this yet because we don't know how this particular type of urchin urchin is going to behave now what you want to do is leave everything the way it is. We don't really need to change anything here. Uh, the Z offset, we might actually drop it down. We'll see. But for the collision radius, we're going to reduce to 50 and shaded radius about 20. A number of steps, we can increase this to like about eight, uh, which will give you a different age variation of this type of, uh, of urchins. Now, initial seed density, we're going to keep it at 1, and an average spread distance is 50, and spread variation is 150. And then seed per step, we're going to keep it at 3, and everything else is going to stay at 0. We're going to do can grow in the shade and spawn in the shade as well. Now, max initial age is going to be 1, and max age is a 10. And then procedural scale, we're going to keep this at 1, because we don't want them to be big. So procedural scale could be from 0.2 to 1. And then also the cold distance is going to be 1,000 to maybe 3,000. And I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and click Save. Now they both have the same collision radius for the shade and collision. So this might be... Not a good setup for both of them have exactly the same numbers, but we'll test this out. So see urchin, we're gonna drop the foliage box in here. And what I'm gonna do is reset my rotation because it just got snapped to the grid. And we're gonna rename uh, resize this to like five, five, and then we can keep this at one because we don't really need to be making it too big. So I'm gonna drop this in. Make sure that your procedural box is below the ground like that, but above this, the ground that you're working with. Otherwise, it won't spawn anything. So it's okay for it to be under, but not above. Okay, then we're going to scroll down to the bottom. It says allow BSP. We're going to disable that and static mesh. We don't want that to spawn on a static mesh yet. Uh, if we'll have some corals, then maybe we can do that and allow it, but for right now we're just going to do a landscape. So let's go ahead and click Resimulate. And depending on how much information that are registered, so it's either already too much populated that it doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do is do Collision Radius 10 and then Shader Radius maybe like 12. And then going to click save if not we're going to change average spread so next we're going to do resimulate again oh you know what i forgot to do forgot to mention inclusion of the landscape so this is going to be landscape and this is the same coral but i want to show it to you the name of this 
landscape material. So this is sand coral. So in minimum included, it's going to be 0.1. And it's going to be sand underscore coral. Make sure it's properly named sand coral. Click save. Now we're going to head and press place. And then resimulate. See if this will spawn any sea origins. Now it might actually not do anything because I've decreased the amount of the radius, especially to a lower number now over here. Collision radius 10 and shading radius 12. So if we were to increase it just a little bit, the simulation for the procedural foliage would speed up a bit, but I'm pushing. I'm definitely pushing here. So we'll see what we can get. All right, cool. So you can see that now we have lots of different origins spawning, but you can see that there is this cutoff line here. And that is because it's a straight box and Again, you can definitely play with some of these numbers to increase them, decrease them, but this gives you an idea of what you can create. So I can definitely resize the box, uh, especially for these. So we can do maybe like one by one, right? And then we're gonna select the box and then I'll move it over just a bit. And then I wanna re-simulate this one more time. Now this should take a little bit less time, theoretically speaking, because I've just reduced the size of the box by five times. But because of the setup for the, what you call it, the radius of the shader, or should the collision, uh, it's still taking exactly the same amount of time for it to to generate, so regardless of the size of the box, it all has to do with how much collision radius and shade radius has been applied there. So here we go, a little bit smaller, and then we can create patches like this. Now I know it's obvious that there it looks like a square. So in this scenario, you can change a couple things. But before we do anything, I want to see how it actually sits on the ground and with the urchins you can see that they are spawning pretty much right on top of the ground and with this you can do like negative two let's say so that way the offset is lower uh, we can increase the let's say, collision radius maybe like 20 and then shade radius like about 23 number of steps and again this you can see that this one is bigger than the other one so there's eight different variations of sizes that you can get of these urchins. What else we can change? Average spread, let's do 75. Let's see how that looks. Let's go ahead and click save and then re-simulate this. And now there should be a little bit less of them, but it's still gonna take quite some time for it to generate because even with these numbers, it will take a while. But you can see that now there is a little bit less of them still quite a lot uh, but in a smaller section like this and you can do that with a lot of stuff but we're not going to be using this in this example i just figured i'll show this to you and uh, this is probably going to be populated later once i get all the corals and because then they'll be populated a little bit better so you can see that over here uh we have a well this is not a static mesh this is a foliage type so if we're to go a love foliage Let's go ahead and see if that will spawn on top of a coral that is the foliage type. If this was a static mesh, then you would want to make sure it says allow static mesh to be enabled and it will spawn on top of the static mesh. Now we can see that it did not affect simulation on the foliage. Very interesting. I did not know that this was going to do that, but assuming it's some sort of bug. Uh, next thing we know that now by putting negative two, you can see that some of the urchins are spawning halfway into the ground or the soil. And now I gotta wait for the auto save to complete because I did not notice it was doing that. 
All right, well, that took forever. I thought it was going to be Christmas time by the time it loads up. Anyway, so for some reason, it does not spawn anything on static uh, on the foliage. So let's go ahead and click enable static mesh, see if that does anything. Because I don't know if it considers it as a static mesh because this is a grass type. So I'm assuming a foliage will be actually this. So now it should spawn on the static mesh, please do. And it does not. Oh well. I wonder if it's because of... Oh, you know what? I think I know why. Because our Z offset is set to zero. So if let's say do maybe 10. Uh, and we know it's not gonna well it might actually spawn let's see does it actually spawn above the ground if you do higher than the ground surface so let's see i've never actually tested this out before but let's give it a try and so yeah i, I guess they could spawn above and just float which is really really strange i guess it's pretty cool to do that for something futuristic but you can see that over here it somewhat does it, but I know it's not the reason why. So the foliage does not work. The static mesh is not working for that. And uh, this should not be at 10, but at zero. We're gonna save this. I'm gonna take the sea urchins out of here as an example that I had. And we have one more thing I've noticed is that the grass type that I currently build. Oh, come on. We're really going to recalculate everything. <sighs> All right, delete that empty folder, close everything off. All right, so the other thing I was going to show is that once I place this uh, grass type static mesh of this underwater kelp, uh, we have this formation happening so we're going to fix that first and i'll show you how to do that it's pretty simple actually so first i need to find my grass types we're going to go to content brush file materials landscape grass types and then under our sand was it the seaweed going to open that up scroll to the bottom and find this Right here, this kelp right here. What you want to do for tall ones like this, I usually say, is it align to surface? I'm gonna disable that. I'm gonna click save. Now it should look more straight and that align to normal. Here we go. I fixed it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for these ones. I just don't remember. I think it's under the seaweed one. Gonna scroll, scroll, scroll. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right, I finally found it. It was under seaweed two, and it's uh, ninth in the section here. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to align to surface, disable that one as well, and then same for this one, align to surface, disabled, and then click save. And now all of these long seaweed should be more straight than. They originally were set up because they were set to align to normal, even though this is still not considered part of the slope. And now it looks much better. Now, for some reason, I do have this weird uh, bug. Oh, I guess it went away. So sometimes when I do changes, it like does not load certain portion of the landscape, but it works fine now. Oh yeah, here you can see that there's not everything has been loaded yet, so it takes some time. Boom. But again, remember, I'm like flying through here through the map, so you're not going to be able to do this as a character. But yeah, I hope you guys like this tutorial. There's going to be more stuff coming out soon. And uh, we'll be adding uh, corals in the next couple of videos because it's going to be a lot of work to create some really cool stunning corals. And then after that, we'll begin populating it with some fish. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time.